Oftentimes, animation productions require the need for one scene to have many different configurations. In the past, this was accomplished by saving multiple scenes, each scene with its own settings. With today's modern production pipelines, using a workflow that incorporates compositing to make alterations to the final image, it has become more important than ever to render a scene with several different configurations or states. This is where state sets in 3ds Max become a valuable tool for accelerating performance and streamlining production workflows. State sets in 3ds Max also allow seamless interoperability between 3ds Max, Adobe Photoshop, and Adobe After Effects. If you are a user of Adobe Photoshop or Adobe After Effects, state sets can become a very valuable tool. This scene represents an underground hallway leading to a mysterious door with no doorknob. There are several sets of lights, each illuminating a certain part of the hallway. Adjusting the lighting of the scene can often be a difficult and time-consuming part of a rendering, whether for still images or animations. By using state sets to separate out each component of the lighting, you are able to adjust the lighting in the compositing stage. This not only saves you time, but gives you added flexibility to make changes to the lighting without re-rendering a scene. State sets can be accessed in one of several ways. There's a state sets toolbar, or you can use the rendering menu dropdown. For this lesson, choose rendering state sets. The state sets dialog opens. Under the state sets list is state 01, the current state of the scene. To change the name of the state, click the name twice slowly and then enter default as the new title. In order to make changes to the scene, a state set must be added for each configuration. To make the changes required in the lighting, choose Tools Light Lister. The Light Lister contains four entries, one for the upper lights in the ceiling, one for the lower lights along the floor, one for the vertical tube light in the corner, and one for the light over the door. The concept behind state sets is to create the state, then record the modifications to the state. In the State Sets dialog, right click State Sets and choose Add State. Click the title of the new state and rename it Floor. To activate the state and record the changes, click the arrow to the left of the floor title. The arrow turns green, indicating that this is the currently active state set. One thing to note, while the state arrow is green, any properties that are changed are recorded as part of the state. However, there is an option in the state sets configuration to deactivate the Always Record functionality. In the light lister, deselect the checkbox for the upper lights, vertical tube light, and door overhead light. These changes are now recorded as part of the floor state. Click the green arrow to stop recording. This turns off the state. Now you can see the lights turned back on, and now there is a plus to the left of the state set hierarchy. Add a new state. Again, right click State Sets and choose Add State. Select the title and rename it Ceiling. To activate the state and record the changes, click the arrow to the left of the ceiling title. The arrow turns green, indicating this is the currently active state set. In the light lister, click Refresh. Deselect the checkboxes for the lower lights, vertical tube light, and door overhead light. These changes are now recorded as part of the ceiling state. Click the arrow for the floor state. This records the changes and switches between the two states in the viewports. Add a new state again. Right-click State Sets and choose Add State. Rename this state Doorway. To activate the state and record the changes, click the arrow to the left of the doorway title. 
The arrow turns green, indicating this is the currently active state set. In the light lister, click Refresh. Deselect the checkboxes for the lower lights and upper lights. These changes are now recorded as part of the doorway state. Click the green arrow to record the changes. To see what changes are recorded, click the plus to the left of the doorway state. The next level indicates that there are nine node property changes. Click the plus to open the property changes level. The list shows the lights that have properties that have been changed. Close the top level of the doorway state. The teapot icon to the left of the state arrow is the render output toggle. It determines whether the state will be rendered or not. Since the default state is not required in this case, click the render output toggle for the default state to keep it from rendering. Now close the light lister, as it is no longer needed at this point. The current scene is set up to render to an open EXR file. This file is a high dynamic range image format that is useful for compositing. However, if you render the states now, they will all render to one image and overwrite it each time the scene renders. To have each state render to an individual file, choose States, Render Output from the State Sets menu. If you do not see three buttons at the bottom of the dialog, place your cursor just above the Set Render Output File Pattern title bar. Then click and drag to expand the lower section until the buttons appear. If you do not see the entire path, expand the dialog to the right until the entire path is visible. Use the cursor and select the entire path, and then press Delete to delete the path. Click Browse and navigate to 3ds Max Project Render Output CH12. This sets the directory. Add a backslash to the end of the path. To add a token, or an automatically added element to the name, click Tokens Scene Name. Type an underscore after the scene name token. Click Tokens State Name to add the state name as part of the file name. Complete the name by adding .exr as the file extension. Click Set Path. Now the images will be rendered to the path and file name. Render the state sets by choosing States Render All States from the State Sets menu.